Welcome to ReFilm, two FBI agents, John Crawford, and Tom Lone, are at a dock warehouse in San Francisco, where John is smoking cigarettes. Tom asks him what he is doing, since he does not normally smoke. He inquires whether Jenny, John's wife, knows, to which John replies, she doesn't and asks him to not tell her. Tom smirks and says he won't. Tom offers a toothpick, which according to him can help resist the urge of smoking. John just laughs at this, and throws the toothpick away. They hear a noise behind them. Tom asks John how many shooters he counted. John replies five or six. In the same warehouse as the Chinese triads. As the enemies are well guarded, it is obvious that they had been tipped off. John starts to complain, by saying that they both lost two years of work due to this. Another sound comes, and Tom asks John to take a look. John replies as long as it is only a look, he will go. The two then reload their guns, a shotgun for John and a pistol for Tom, and head off to the harbor. They slowly make their way in, checking every corner and place, before they enter the door of the cabin. John notices a bullet casing on the floor, with the markings of the assassin rogue. John tries to warn Tom, but Tom has already gone inside the harbor building, and has met the Chinese triads. They start exchanging bullets, but Tom expertly kills many people, before going in. John, when he realizes Tom has started firing bullets, joins the fight in full force, as he knows he can't leave his partner alone. The two kill many people at the harbor, showcasing their skills as gunmen. John is fearless as he engages the triads, as he is not even ducking and taking cover. He is just relentlessly going forward with his shotgun in front of him, ready to fire if someone comes in front. As a result, he along with Tom, kill a bunch of people. After the shootout, Rogue has fallen into the water, and Tom comes up to check on John, who replies that he is fine. Tom then offers a hand to John, and he gets up and asks Tom if he got them, Tom replies that he shot him in the face, and that the guy is dead. John then comments that the world is full of people, who believe that they killed the guy. Tom says that it seems John knew the guy, and John says that the Yakuza had hired an independent contractor, to deal with the triads, and that guy was supposed to be the best. He also comments that the CIA used him as well, and that this guy is a myth, and the story about him killing his handlers was also fake. He picks up a bullet casing, and shows him the man's symbol on it. The two continue talking until the police arrive. The cops ask them to stay still, but the two show their badges. A couple of days later, Tom is at his home, and he receives a call from John. Tom's wife picks up the call, and asks him to wait while she gets the phone to Tom. Before she hands him the phone, she asks Tom to tell John that he cannot smoke in front of the kids, and she thought he had quit. Tom then answers the phone, and John starts to talk to him, but mid-conversation John's wife interrupts him, and takes his cigarette away, then she picks up her daughter and the two go out to shop. Tom and John then discuss the case. John learns that Rogue's body has never been recovered. Tom also informs John, that Rogue's body has been devoured. Rogue has been presumed dead. John hangs up the phone after speaking with Tom. He then tells his wife that they need to pick up some steaks. John and his family are planning to visit Tom's house. Regrettably, it is revealed that Rogue is still alive. Tom's residence is found by Rogue. He enters the building while Tom is in the bathroom, and starts beating his wife, hearing her screams, Tom comes out, but is shot by Rogue, who then throws him through a door. He falls inside, and sees that his wife is hugging his daughter, and they are screaming for their lives. Rogue first puts a gun to Tom's head, but then he points the gun at his family and fires two shots. Rogue then sets fire to the home and leaves. John is asleep in the car, when he is woken up by his wife who sounds worried. There is a lot of police outside Tom's house. It seems that the house was set on fire, John immediately rushes out of the car and starts walking towards the house, a cop tries to stop him, but he shows him his badge, and the cop allows him to pass. The cop then tells him that they have three fatalities, one of them is a man, the other is a woman, and the third is a child. John opens one of the body bags, and is taken aback by the sight in front of him. He starts gasping for breath and then takes a look at his wife, who also seems to be crying. John goes into Tom's burnt house, and starts looking around for some clues. He discovers Rogue's gun shells. As he sees the shells, a cop tells him that CSI needs to sweep the scene, and they need to do their job. John then gets up and walks outside, puts on his glasses, and then opens his fist, to reveal a bullet casing with the Rogue's logo. A while later, a man is shown driving a sports car to a club, he is immediately allowed into the club. Inside, people continue to dance, as the mystery man walks through them. Some members of the triads are shown looking at this through their cameras, while the man slices the necks of some guards, and continues to walk into the private area of the club. He follows a man who is being led by a prostitute. A prostitute runs crying out of a side room, carrying her clothes with her. A member of the triads then walks out, 
and sits on a chair in the center of the room, as his goons continue gambling. The girl runs by the mystery man, and he enters a room, where the man he is following is having sex with the prostitute. He shoots the man in the head, as the prostitute screams. Hearing the gunshot, all the gang members grab guns and start looking for the source of the commotion. Suddenly their cameras go off, and the triad boss tells his dogs to get the guy. The dogs run off in search of the intruder, but just as they turn the corner, they squeal, and then there is silence. The man then comes around the corner, as all the gang members start shooting at him. Thinking that he is dead, the boss sends one of his goons to check, but when he doesn't return, he calls for him. But this time, one of his dogs comes around the corner, and comes to lay next to him. It turns out that he has a bomb tied to his neck, which goes off killing everyone in the room. Rogue is then shown walking towards the triad member, and when the man asks why he betrayed him, Rogue shoots him. John seeks vengeance for his companion, and promises to assassinate Rogue. Meanwhile, Rogue instigates a fight between the triads and the Yakuza's in San Francisco, for no apparent reason. Rogue appears to be working for the local mafia Chang, when he kills his son like man in the triads, and deceives him into thinking it was done by the Yakuza's. He then informs the man's brother, about a man working under Shiro, leading him to the location of a tea house, where rival gangs fight, while Rogue sits in a window, picking off anyone coming out with a sniper gun. Rogue is an excellent combatant, a great liar, and an expert at disappearing quickly. While still working for Chang's triad, he works for the Japanese Yakuza, and kills Chang on their orders. However, he did not carry out the mob's full command, by not assassinating Chang's wife and daughter, as he had promised Shiro. John discovers that Rogue had plastic surgery to alter his appearance, and tracks down the surgeon who performed the procedure, confirming his current identity as Victor Shaw. John gets photos of Rogue murdering Shiro's assassins, and helping Chang's wife and daughter into a car, thanks to his watchman. He provides these photos to Shiro, who is lured to San Francisco by Rogue, using a pair of precious gold horse statues from Japan, one of which is a fake of the other. Shiro orders his men to torture Rogue, in order to discover where Chang's wife and daughter are kept, but Rogue escapes, and kills Shiro's men, before detonating the bomb he had hidden in the second suitcase, killing almost everyone except Shiro. He decides to fight Shiro with a sword. Shiro takes up a sword as well. When Shiro wonders why he's doing this, Rogue explains, that it's because Shiro ordered a killing. Shiro ponders which of the various orders was for the assassination of Tom Lone and his family. He should not have ordered the women and children to be killed. Shiro recognizes Rogue as none other than Tom Lone. Rogue murdered Tom's family, but Tom was able to avenge them. Tom underwent plastic surgery to portray himself as Rogue, after killing him. Three years after Rogue and Tom's family were murdered, Tom returned to San Francisco to kill Shiro's adversaries, henchmen, and Shiro himself. Tom planned to avenge the death of his family, by killing Shiro last. Rogue begins a skilled fight, that the mob eventually loses, revealing another shocking truth, it's all because John allowed it to happen. This adds another interesting twist, as Rogue beheads Shiro after discovering the truth. The wife of Chang receives a parcel, containing the original gold horse statue, and a message from Rogue, saying, make a new life. Shiro's daughter, who had returned to Japan, receives the identical message, along with a bag containing Shiro's head. Rogue summons John to a meeting, at the first known location for both of them, and John dispatches a sniper to the location, in order to assassinate Rogue. Rogue and John fight ferociously and when they are face to face, Rogue exposes himself to be Tom Lone. John recognizes Tom's gaze, and apologizes, asking if he could ever forgive him. Tom adopts the moniker Rogue. When the FBI agent assigned to shoot Rogue tries to shoot him, John steps in front of him, and Rogue shoots him in the back, killing him. John apologizes to Rogue, but Rogue refuses to accept his apology. Tom, as Rogue, drives away in his car, with the suitcase full of money that the triad had given him earlier. Thanks for watching.